Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Property Management with today's real estate tip. Today I'm joined by Nick Ludwig out of with Dolif Insurance. Correct. Or Dolif, I believe is the correct pronunciation. Whatever you call me is fine. <laughs> uh, today we're going to talk about something uh, specifically of importance to tenants, to renters, and that is tenant slash renters insurance. That's right. And some of the, the you know the definite benefits and costs and coverages that are available. So Nick. With that, I'll turn it over to you, and you can kind of just give us a little intro and, and tell us what you think. Sure. Uh, tenant insurance, and I guess we're, we're really focusing on the apartment dweller, the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the private uh, house um, uh, renter. And, uh, not commercial properties. Not commercial properties, exactly. Rental tenant, yeah. So uh, this insurance is, is widely available. And it is very inexpensive, and I think this is one of the types of insurance where there's the most bang for your buck of any kind of insurance. And here's why. Because typically you get a policy for, well, it depends on how much property you, you want to insure. You know, some people have a lot of stuff in their apartment, but some people don't have much. And uh, you can decide how much you want to insure, but really you can get a policy for $100, $150 a year even. I mean, right. this is really pretty cheap. Right, right. That's and like 10, 20 bucks a month. Right, right or less. yeah. You know, it's, you could pay a little more. You can see some, depending, you know, a couple hundred. But really, it's in that range. And here's what you get. You get both property and liability insurance in that little package, right? So you get, you get coverage for your stuff, and you also get coverage. So you get uh, a loss happens, flood, fire. And you got to move out temporarily while they're fixing up your apartment. So this policy will pay you the additional living expenses to go find another place. Yeah, to because live. the landlord's policy on, on the property generally doesn't cover the no. the personal property or the possessions it, of the tenant, right? It does not, and it doesn't cover their additional living expense, right? In fact, depending on the lease, right, the landlord might say, "Look, it's going to take six months to fix this thing." You're going to have to find another place to live. Or if they want to keep the tenant, they might say, well, you know, we'd like to have you back, but we got to fix this thing. Right. right. And so this policy pays, and I have I know uh, customers and people I know and friends that have, they've been out for several months and they stay, either they maybe they rent another place or sometimes even if it's a shorter term, they'll stay in a hotel for a while. And that's all paid by the insurance. And, well, and, and, and you could like partially or you get more discounts if you were to like stack the coverage right against like if you had an auto policy oh yeah sure in fact it's it's just it's the same uh the way it is with like if you have you own a home yeah and you can get discounts from insurance companies if you insure both your home and auto okay so v very similar in fact the same way it goes if you just have a renter's policy or a tenant policy okay but this is not all there's still more coverage right so you also get some liability coverage and you can buy whatever limits you want but typically it starts out as typical policies will start at a hundred thousand dollars of liability coverage and so you got a dog, your dog bites somebody, that's covered under liability, right? Okay. And, uh, or the old example, which was from years ago, nobody knows this anymore except the older folks, is that if you hit, you're at the golf course, right, and you, you hit somebody with your, your drive, you know, and you, you hit them in the head with a golf ball, right? That would be a, a personal liability, and it would be covered under this kind of Interesting. policy. Interesting. Just like it would be under a homeowner's policy. So I've never successfully driven a golf ball, you <laughs> right, know, right. Unless, unless you kind of – well, in fact, I might be the, the, the poster child because mine usually slice, you know, right or left or – you know, or, or even you don't hit some, uh, you, you don't hit somebody, but you, you know, you damage something. I don't know. You break a window. Right. I suppose things like that are always possibilities. But, but there's a, there's an endless amount. So you're in your, you're in your apartment, and somebody trips over your couch, and and you and you might say, or they might say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go after the landlord, but the landlord is gonna say, well, listen, it isn't my fault. It happened in your apartment. You're the one that caused this. And so it should be your liability. Right. So even if you're out back playing ball and someone hits a baseball yeah. in the house and breaks the right. $2,000 pane glass window. You right. Know? Something like that. Okay. Right. Yeah. And Interesting. So, and so all these things are covered by uh, a tenant uh, policy. 
And, and of course, you can even add things like you can add additional uh, liability, like an umbrella policy to it. If you have jewelry or artwork or anything like that, you can add that to that policy, just like you would with a home a homeowner's policy. You, you bring up jewelry, and, and I don't have a lot of jewelry, but um, like someone say someone does, is that typically not covered by the policy, or is it covered to a point, and then you need to get a, a rider or... Yeah, let, uh, we can talk about jewelry if you want, or other kinds of, of uh, valuable articles, yeah, right? Yeah. And so there's two two things that you have to look out for in these kind of policies. And again, this applies both to tenant policies as well as homeowner policies. The same basic coverage provisions apply. So here's the first thing you have to watch for. These policies will have limits on certain types of property. So they'll cap coverage for things like guns, uh, well, money, and if you have gold or gold coins or things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's the first thing you have to look out for is that there will be some limitations for certain types of property under these policies, very typical. The other thing, however, specifically talking about jewelry is, is that if in fact you insure them specifically, you get a couple big advantages right away. One is that they're typically zero deductible. So you might have a deductible on your policy, maybe it's $500, maybe it's $1,000. But if you have uh, a jewelry a floater, they call them, or a, or a, a, a valuable articles writer, mm -hmm. then those things will typically be insured uh, with zero deductible. So okay. You get, so you get you know a first dollar coverage. Secondly, the coverage is a little better. Again, depends on the insurance company, but you many times can get uh, coverage under this writer for uh, if you lose it, misplaced. Uh, the stone falls out of the, the setting yep. and you lose that part of it. And those things are, the, the, the standard coverage is more limited for things like that. Yep. Uh, pair and set coverage, which is just, you know, you lose one earring but not the other and, um, and you're really not a pirate, so one earring <laughs> doesn't really help you very much, right? <laughs> so, so those are the kinds of things, the advantages to right. having, to having uh, jewelry coverage valuable watches. People insure all sorts of things under these kinds of, of, of endorsements or writers and and because uh, people just have stuff that's valuable and maybe it's um, it's a little fragile or they just want better coverage for it. Right, right. So it's not, it can be simple but it can also be a little more complex if you, depending on your situation. So if someone wants more information, what is the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, just uh, call me or email me. Uh, phone number is 952-593-7400. And my email is nludwig, L-U-D-W-I-G, at dolliff.com. And that's spelled D-O-L-L-I-F-F.com. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Nick. So that was Nick Ludwig. I'm Scott Picard with Verde Property Management. If you want to get a hold of us, the number is 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888. Call or text or 24-7 online at verde-realestate.com. We hope this content has been valuable. And like always, if you would like further service, please let us know. Thank you.